Uh, what I've done here is it gives it instructions for writing a topicality shell. All you have to do if you're the debater in this in this round that's trying to read this topicality shell is give the resolution and give whatever interv you want them to follow. So like, for example, I'll say the resolution is like India should sign the Artemis Accords. And then the interpretation that I want them to follow is that uh, they should have India sign and not ratify. For example, if they said like the plan was ratify. If you give this uh, really long prompt here, it will create an interpretation, a violation. Uh, yeah. So basically they should argue for signing, not ratifying. It'll give, uh, it obviously has the topic, so it knows the specific terms of the topic. It will give like two standards out of the ones that I fed it. So like the two that it picked here was ground and predictability, which are, uh, and it just spits them out within 10 seconds. It will give an education and a fairness voter. One thing that it doesn't give that often is a jurisdiction voter. Uh, it does occasionally give a jurisdiction voter if it's something that the, that like if the affirmative does something that is not at all related to the topic, which is interesting that it has that kind of nuance when it's writing. And then I have these pre-programmed paradigm issues with like a drop the debater and no reverse voting issue and then counter interpretations rather than reasonability uh, against the affirmative. And this is something that you could definitely read in a debate round. And uh, I haven't gone through and looked at as much at this one specifically. Obviously, you want to pre-read through everything that it gives you. But this should, the majority of the time, give you a topicality show that is suitable for reading within the round. And if you're not satisfied with it, what you can do is you can type in, like, you gave me a standard that's inconsistent with XYZ. Retry. And it will spit a new one out. And it will do it a lot faster because most of the time it will just take what it's already written. Or, or sometimes we'll just give you the that around. Uh, the only thing that may be complicated with this is if you want to copy this over into a speech document to send out before your speech. But I know a lot of people that don't even put uh, necessarily entire theory interpretations. That's basically something that's up to your discretion. The interesting here now thing here now is that uh, it's able to create this interpretation, this violation, uh, standards, voters, paradigm issues, and something that I've had to do that I think I, I'd want to show more than um, how to create another kind of theory interpretation is how to answer a, a, a topicality show in here. If you have an interpretation that they've read against you and you, uh, ha and you, for example, don't have an answer to the definition that they read or you don't have any specific answer to another paradigm issue that they said, uh, this prompt here that it was is able to answer a topicality show will go through and give instructions of how to get like a we meet and like a, a counter interpretation rather than the regular interpretation. So here I will say um, this is the topic, this is the affirmative plan. Yeah, this is the interpretation, or I'll just even say this is the negative shell. And then I will copy this entire shell over into here and it will be able to, yeah. And then it will be able to process the shell. It's a very, very long prompt as you can see, but then it will start spitting out like a, we meet the negative interpretation, a counter interpretation uh, to this. It, you know, signing and ratifying are part of the same process. It's a very good uh, counter interpret. It even can say like a, we meet because signing is necessary step before ratifying it. That's a very good, that's a pretty, I would, I would see that, say that's a pretty good argument. Um, I, I've had it spit out these things, like I call them counter standards to be able to specify in its mind what is the, like the negative standard and what's the affirmative standard. Um, but if you were to just read this out and just uh, look, you'll be able to, as you read even within a round, be able to see the small flaws that this has and just skip over that part. You can go through this and this gives you a we need a counter interpretation, your own really shell with a standard and a voter, answers the negative standards, answers the negative voter and weighs it with your voter. And then it also answers the paradigm. So if they read a counter interpretation paradigm, then it will say reasonability is more important. And then this is how we went under reasonability. I think one thing it will say even, uh, yeah, I think like it even agrees here with the other paradigm issues because it says they're not important, which is something that's uh, really interesting. And one thing that I've done in other chats that I've had with ChatGPT is I've had it, I've just copied in entire paragraphs, uh, or not entire paragraphs, entire articles of debate theory to have it process and then know that information because it's not able to just what the information was trained on know all the specifics. But if you were like, just find it an entire article of how to run a topicality shell, paste it in there, it then can digest all that knowledge. And then when you put these prompts in, it's able to give you answers and uh, it, it's able to give you responses and shells that are much closer to what you'd expect in an actual academic debate round. So it's something that's very good. And I'm gonna con I'm gonna continue trying to figure out how to re do this with other uh, theory shells, different types of theory shells as well, as well as try to get it to cut cards and put it into a shell. Although I think that's something that ChatGPT will have a harder time with than an application like Bing. But I think that this tool here, the uh, prompt genius, as well as the 
Web access are something that if you are using ChatGPT for debate, it can be a great assistant when you're debating. Obviously, it's not going to replace what you're already using. It's not nearly at that level yet. Uh, but if you don't have answers to a specific shell that they're reading, if you didn't see their definition like or, or where it was coming from or like uh, and you didn't really know how to answer a shell or you didn't really know how to uh, what to read against a new affirmative, it's able to spit these out really, really fast. Within like uh, 15 seconds, it's able to do a card and within like 30 seconds, it's able to do a topicality shell. And that's way faster then you'd be able to do it as a debater. And even when you're reading through it, you can even have it. And I've done this a couple of times. I've had it spit out a topicality shell and then it's going through and writing it faster than I'm able to like even uh, even speed read through it. And uh, that is means that it could be something that's very valuable in the round, especially against a new affirmative. Uh, now what 